Development uh, from the war in Ukraine, where about a 60 mile long Russian military convoy is now advancing on the capital, Kyiv. Uh, the latest development is happening in a day. Northeastern Kharkiv comes under intense shelling for a second successive day by the Russian forces. President Zelensky has called the attacks on Kharkiv state terrorism while demanding for a no fly zone over Ukraine. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has also accused Russia of barbaric and indiscriminate attacks, saying the United Kingdom stands with Ukraine. At least 70 Ukrainian soldiers were killed in a Russian artillery attack on a military base in Okitka. Russian missiles have struck residential areas in the northeastern city of Kharkiv, according to a regional source. Negotiations between delegations from Kyiv and Moscow held at the Ukraine-Belarus border on Monday, but it ended with no agreements except to keep talking. We have more in this report. President of Ukraine is accusing Russia of war crimes with residential areas, also attacked, and civilians, including 16 children, killed. In the northeastern city of Otaika, up to 70 Ukrainian soldiers have reportedly been killed in a Russian artillery strike. In a statement issued by Russia's defense ministry, residents of Kyiv have been warned that Russian forces are preparing to launch high-precision strikes against technological centers of the Ukrainian security service in Kyiv. According to the officials, the strikes are being carried out to prevent information attacks against Russia. But Ukraine Defense Minister warns of possible psychological attack by Russia. With the level of damage done so far, the United Nations has estimated that more than 660,000 persons have left Ukraine in search of safety. UN agencies have now launched an emergency appeal to respond to the rapidly escalating humanitarian crisis, calling for $1.7 billion to help people who have fled the country and those still trapped inside. We have a duty to ensure that this crisis does not spread any further. But if we are to have any chance of ending this nightmare, then Putin must understand that his savagery will be met with unrelenting economic pressure and that the West will be united in supporting Ukraine and that we are ready for a prolonged crisis. I have no doubt that if the West can maintain the extraordinary unity that we have shown so far, if we can press ahead with the strategy we have set out of international, economic, humanitarian and uh, diplomatic assistance to Ukraine, along with defensive weapons. The UN's High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, announced that 150,000 more people had fled Ukraine in the last 24 hours calling for compassion to match the scale of the crisis. Responding to Ukraine's application to become a European Union member state, President of the EU Council noted that although the request is legitimate, it will be difficult to consider as there is no unity on the issue of enlargement in the 27-nation bloc. This comes just as President of the European Commission warned the EU will never accept the view that Ukraine has no right to exist, condemning what he calls President Putin's naked aggression against the country. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has appeared to offer a new justification of Russia's invasion, stating it is to prevent Ukraine acquiring nuclear weapons.